Meanwhile, CGTN's chief anchor, Beatrice Marshall, has been a guest on Lunchtime News at the Uganda Broadcasting Corporation. During the show, Marshall briefed the Ugandan audience on China's latest efforts in containing COVID-19. She also talked about Africa's preparedness and the media's role in the fight against the epidemic. Where I will point out that the World Health Organization has actually uh, commended China on the response mechanism. And they have said that uh, China's uh, response has actually set a world standard in emergency response. So yes. in terms of how Wuhan managed to uh, contain the situation, we will take it from the World Health Organization that okay. the, the response has been phenomenal. Mm. Secondly, let's see what the Chinese authorities have done up to this stage. Mm. Right, apart from just building uh, one hospital in under 10 days, mm. and this hospital was built uh, to the specifications of lessons learned before from the SARS mm. uh, epidemic. And, uh, but they're now using newer technology to ensure that the virus does not escape, to ensure that there is minimal um, uh, infection with uh, uh, health personnel and so forth. They built a second hospital which opened just slightly after the 10-day period. They've also built another 15 temporary hospitals within Wuhan just to deal with the, um, uh, with the epidemic. So if you can see how much effort has mm. been put mm. into uh, trying to bring the situation under control. I also want to point out that, um, yes, as CGTN, we have correspondents inside Wuhan, all over China, monitoring the situation, giving us up-to-speed information as to what is going on inside Wuhan. But also, Chinese mm. officials themselves give us daily updates. The World Health Organization, February 10th, went into China on an assessment mission to mm. see what was going on and then gave their feedback. And they have said, this is not a pandemic. This is an epidemic. Uh, public health officials constantly, every day, hold uh, news conferences, press mm. conferences to update the entire world on the new number, uh, on the new figures, on the new Chinese efforts, mm. uh, on, on what they're going, on what is being done, on how the numbers are coming uh, down, and coming also down. Yes. to enable other countries learn from the Chinese experience mm. and ensure that within their own borders, the situation doesn't get out of control. Let's talk about Africa and business, the economy. Right. How has this affected the economy, one way or another, from your report? Well. Of course, trade uh, has been affected because China is Africa's largest trading China, partner. China, yes. Has been Ch uh, Africa's largest trading partner since 2009. There is a lot of trade going on uh, between, apart from just the people-to-people -people travel. According to the African Union, uh, over the last 10 years alone, mm. there has been an increase in flights uh, between China and Africa of up to 600 percent. Mm. So there is a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, impact on trade. Im impact on trade. And, and, of, and of course, um, we, we know that um, uh, before the, the epidemic is brought under control, there are certain measures that other countries, countries have taken to protect themselves. Mm. But we know that airlines such as um, Ethiopian, Ethiopian Air airlines. is still flying to five destinations in China daily. Mm. So there is still quite a bit of business ongoing, even though um, uh, business uh, has slowed down as a, as a result. But let's also look at the new... Um, a trend that is mm. happening in Africa, mm. online trading. Online trading, yeah. Online trading is still ongoing. Mm. Uh, that has not been disrupted. And that's not, that's not just actually in Africa. Even in China itself, right. businesses have had to meta metamorphosize themselves to the, the challenge. And now more online trading is, is, is coming on deliveries, home deliveries and things like that, which, which is very commendable. Mm -hmm. So even Africa alone, let's, let's put Uganda into perspective. Right. Uganda exports goods worth over 23 million US dollars and we import over 100 and uh, 100 100 100 trillion of goods mm -hmm. 100 trillion US dollars of goods well a people a number of people in the business community are are forecasting maybe increases in prices because you know production might be low and then demand might spike yes so what, what do you have to say about the demand and supply effect? Well, we are seeing um, uh, this from this week. We are seeing uh, China uh, uh, talking about economic recovery. We are seeing businesses, industries beginning to operate. We are seeing uh, countries like uh, New Zealand um, is talking about resumption of flights, mm. uh, thinking about resumption mm. of flights, mm. Egypt Air as well. So we are seeing the resumption of business has started has inside started. China yes. itself, industries, uh, production and uh, you know related uh, manufacturing are starting to pick up again 
we also need to talk about where Africa is in all this. You know, mm. we have about 10,000 Chinese enterprises on the African continent. Yes. They did not shut down. Mm. You know, uh, business continued, work continued, even as governments took preventive measures to ensure that, that the virus did not um, arrive on African soil. Uh, the 10,000 or so enterprises on the African continent were continuing with their businesses on the continent.